Hey guys, it's Dr. Sean over the Natural Body Works, and we're going to go over not just why you have to have, you should have an exam, or when we're doing physical exam for things like acupuncture, dry needling, massage therapy, and chiropractic and stuff like that, but like what actually we're doing with it. two kind of acronyms we're going to go over here today and this is you can apply this to yourself too because you want to look at your own injuries or someone else's injuries in a different way you want to actually see a, a couple different things I have here OPQ or ST we're going to go through that for um, basically for dry knee links we're looking at muscles but first before you do that you want to start with um, actually this may be a good place to start the first thing L here is location O C A T I O N location of where it hurts we need to be as specific as possible some people come in and say my shoulder hurts from here to here or my hip hurts from my mid back to my knee we also there's there's disagreement as to what is your knee and what is your hip and stuff like that people don't understand that their hip is actually the joint and then you have the loin and the, some the thigh and things like that so as we can get more specific we can start ruling out other problems. You know, is it a ligament problem? Is it a disc problem? Is it a, a nerve problem? Is it a muscular problem? Is it a tendon problem? So the more location we can get, and we get that by doing another set, which is called hip H, okay, I, P, P, A, which is history. What's the history of the injury? You know, like how did it happen? Uh, what did you do? Did you fall? Was it uh, sitting on the couch too long? Something like that. We can dis discover some information there. We get the history. We know whether it's uh, maybe there's a swelling or something going on. Now we do inspection. This is where we look for is swelling. We look for bruising. We look for deformity. We look for color changes. We look for limping. We look for tightness. This is inspection. I-N-S-P. Now inspection, if we go further into that one, we're going to look at things like, you know, visually inspect, uh, auditorily inspect, sometimes like with the whole person thing, we would do like how their voice sounds, um, how their tone is, how their breathing sounds, things like inspection. We're going to look and we're going to see, are they having difficulty? Do they look like they're in pain? Something like that. Next one is palpation, which is hands-on. You get your fingers in there and you're going to find where the ropey bits are. If you're looking at a muscle, you're going to find where the tightest part of that muscle is in the belly or in the sides of the muscle or what have you. That's palpation. The next one is percussion. We don't use this one too much. Percussion is either tapping or, or kind of hitting it to see it's, it's, it's uh, uh, the, you can feel the depth of some things and you can do some like echolocation which you do like you've ever had a doctor do this on your tummy that's what they're doing they're using echolocation actually kind of like a sonogram or like a, um, a ultrasound unit to kind of uh, see how the echo feels and you can feel the difference between open organs and solid organs and where they begin and where they end and that's what that's kind of doing okay for that so we don't use that too much for muscle things but it could be in some cases you may want to get in there now we could use percussion with the percussion hammer you know the the neurological hammer we can find uh, whether there's an issue with the nerves with that one totally other animal and the other one here is auscultation now usually which means to listen okay auscultate use the stethoscope you listen to their breathing you listen to their stomach their their bowel sounds their gut sounds you listen to their breathing their heart and that kind of stuff well you don't do that with muscles but what you can hear is what's called crepitus, creaking, sometimes clicking. You know, like maybe they just move their shoulder and we'll hear a pop, a pop, a pop. You'll find out where it is. That brings you back up to your location, okay? Next one we do is location. We have what's an onset, okay? When it began. Onset. When it began, was it abrupt? Was it gradual? Those are two very important things. It depends on how you're going to treat things. If it was gradual, sometimes dry needling is actually better for that kind of thing because the body sometimes sets up this idea that that's normal after a while. After a few weeks of having a muscle spasm, your body, your brain kind of puts it on the back burner and says, I'm not going to deal with that. i got other things to deal with, and it'll deal with those. And it becomes this kind of like subnormal kind of feel where it's just always tight. Now, those ones respond really well to the dry needling that gets in there and really starts up that healing process again, okay? Next one is uh, onset, what makes it palliative, okay? What makes it better, okay, or provoking? And provoking is making it worse. What makes it better, what makes it worse? When I move my arm this way, it's better. Uh, like, for example, 
what's called thoracic outlet syndrome, which is this area through here, those muscles will tighten up and pinch on the nerves leaving the neck and they cause numbness in the fingers and hands. Well, how do we rule that out from either a disc injury or elbow injury or shoulder injury? If they put their hand on their head or they come in like this and say, hey, this doesn't hurt when I do this, that could be thoracic outlet syndrome. Remember that everybody's unique. Every case is unique. Every time you touch somebody, it's a totally new thing, so you can't, you have to go through a process to determine what you're gonna be treating, right? And how, all right? How many needles? How deep? How long? All that kind of stuff. The next one is quality of pain. What is quality of pain versus quantity of pain? We'll get into that down here, but quality of pain, is it burning pain? Is it achy pain? Is it stinging pain? Now, those terms, those um, uh, the adjectives and adverbs that people are going to use, the descriptive words for their uh, pain are going to be different, so you got to have to, you know, use some time to hash that stuff out and write those down because people use different names at different times. Is it burning pain? How was it burning? Oh, burning stinging, kind of cold or warm or is it deep or achy or whatever that is. Now referral, referral of pain, does it go anywhere else? Yeah, it hurts here. When I move, it goes down my arm. It goes down the back of the arm, the front arm, okay? That would be the R. Next one is severity. And this is where, um, you want to get into other, find one that we have a like, visual analog pain scale, VAPS, you've seen that one. Four. And it goes from 0 to 10, 10 being the worst pain possible, can't sleep, can't do you know, screaming, hollering, and 0 is no pain at all, why are you even here? Most people are, are more than a 2. If they're coming in to, to be treated or you have pain, it's got to be over a 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, you're starting to lose sleep, it's starting to wake you up at night, those kind of things. That, again, is a totally subjective thing. Okay, all of these are really subjective. What the onset, they're going to tell you. You don't know where that is and where that happened. You weren't with them, right? What makes it better and worse? Well, you can kind of poke around on them, do some, like, inspection, palpation, percussion. Maybe you can find where it's worse. Maybe that's subjective. That's good. Quality of pain, totally subjective, okay? There's no way to know unless someone tells you. There's no way to know your own pain until you put it into words. And it's important to put it into words. That, that, that helps, actually. Referral of pain, where does it go? You really can't tell, okay? Severity... Um, same thing, we have no idea, okay? And then uh, this one is going to be timing, okay? Is it all the time? Is it sometimes? Is it frequently? And generally, if you go up here to severity again, we can have, is it mild pain, mild, slight, moderate, or severe? Okay, and that's, they give them like, there's, there's like two and a half for each one, 2.5, 1 to 2.5 is mild, 2.6 to uh, 5 is slight, and 5 to 7 is moderate, and then 7 and above is severe pain. You can go like that. Now, these are very, these are kind of like kind of med legal terms we use in reporting and stuff like that. Timing, kind of the same thing. It's whether it's like uh, uh, occasional, intermittent, um, uh, uh, frequent, or constant that kind of level, okay? And when you have those, when you get all of this stuff together, now you have an idea of what's going on with either that muscle or that ligament. You've, you've come up with what are called differential diagnoses. You're like, hey, this could be this other thing. It could be a heart problem because of left shoulder pain, let's say. It could be a lung issue because you're having chest pain. It could be a ligament problem, a rotator cuff problem, whatever, you know, a disc problem. It could be many different problems. So we have to keep an open mind when we're doing the treatments like this. So don't forget to subscribe to the, the channel because I've got other things going and we're trying to combine the stuff I do in every day with the acupuncture pen, which you can probably, you'll see that it's in other videos. You'll see it up here or up here or wherever, somewhere around here. At the end of the video, I'll show, uh, there's a playlist that'll, that'll show up, I think, over here. And then there's the next video which show up here vice versa here and here. I don't know what it is. Somewhere around there. So go to those. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel down in the corner. And um, we'll hopefully see you next time here. And we'll go over this. Leave a comment if you've gone through this or you use this or you try to use it and you're coming up with any stuck spots. Um, this is what we all use with like dry needling, acupuncture, and muscle work and chiropractic and stuff. And you can use it too with your, your acupuncture pen on yourself, you know, where does it hurt, you know, maybe even write it down, because then you can see how this thing works over time, right, uh, how did it start, when did it start, you know, what was the situation it started with, what makes it better, what makes it worse, um, what kind of pain actually is it, what's going on there, is it just tight, or is it achy, is it stingy, is it tickly, 
uh, down here does it refer? Does it go all the way down the arm or down the leg or down around the back or something like that? That can bring up other questions. This one here, severity, give it a number. After you've worked on yourself or worked on someone for a little while, that should go down, right? And then you have a, a better chance of making it better, right? It's, it's healing if you know that these numbers are going down. It's healing if you know if this is getting better, okay? Don't forget to use those, uh, subscribe to the channel and stuff like that. I'll see you guys later. We're going to do more on the acupuncture pan, and we're also doing more on the transcerebral uh, deep, uh, was a direct current stimulator. Uh, I'm working on uh, vivid dreams and lucid dreams and some mental enhancement, which obviously I need because I keep forgetting words. Anyways, Dr. Sean, talk to you guys later.